Welcome to the 69th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could be here. Now today, um, I'm going to be talking about an intarsia pattern that I'm, I'm doing. Um, I did another one last month, which was the um, healthcare worker. Excellent. I've made another healthcare worker. Um, I'm interested for you to see that. And But before we begin, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. All right, so we have done an episode where we were talking about May's favorite cowls and my favorite one skein shawls. Oh, yeah. So this is one of May's favorite cowls, and it is the Anguli cowl, and that is by Hilary Smith Callis. Now, you can see that this one has stripes. This is the very first one that I did for May. And I'm actually wearing this one, I think, on the on the little uh, favorites one. Oh, I think you probably are. Yeah. That's right. Because it was one of the very first things. Because when I started knitting for her, she goes, I don't want anything big and shawl-like. And I said, it's okay. i got a plan. And so you just fell in yeah. love with that. And look where we've been for so, like, for exactly. so long ago that wasn't. And we've got that bin full of stuff. So if you want to exactly. see that, you can see that video. Right. Now, one of the things that somebody had mentioned about that video was it would be great to see things modeled. Yes, that's true. And I agree with that. I think it was a great right. comment. So May has done some work with photography. She's taken some courses. She's been in some classes. Well, I was an educational assistant for many years mm -hmm. and I uh, was in a photography class and I was in the same photography class um, for, you know, I don't know, maybe three or four years. And so I learned a lot of little techniques from right. that teacher who was absolutely amazing. And then Colleen was nice enough to get me private lessons in Toronto. <laughs> and I was going to continue with those private lessons, but then COVID hit. But uh, that was a great gift. That was oh, wonderful. So I, um, I think it was for a birthday or something. Yep. But it was a great, we would just take the train to Toronto and then I would take my photography class. Colleen would go to her yarn stores. <laughs> That's what and I do. <laughs> it, was, it would all work. So yeah, yeah I do have some, uh, some ideas for, for photography. So we should maybe do that. Maybe have a photo shoot um, of you and all your cows. Right, and I think you probably could have some tips and tricks for the yeah, viewers well, as well. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Yeah, that would be great. That would be and great. Of all the things that I've learned from that teacher who was, was amazing. So. Perfect. So the second, the, May is wearing that Anguli cowl, but it is in a different yarn. It's in Wool Free Allegro by Wisdom Yarns. And the nice thing about this cowl is if you have self-striping sock yarn or if you have something like that, that is just a sock yarn. I knit this one because it doesn't have any wool in it. Um, and it, the colors are just perfect on you. It just feels nice and soft and snug and I no know. fuss, no muss. Exactly. You know how when you you have the cowls or you have the, uh, I don't know if they're cowls, what are they, scarves? Shawls. Sh <laughs> shawls. They're shawls. <laughs> we call those things. <laughs> well, you have to kind of boots around with it you know yes, you have to you know and I, I and how to wear it and stuff i don't have to worry about that i know how it's gonna go over the head over the, the head be right there i'm good to go there you go <laughs> no fuss no mess as she says yeah. and that that's another cool thing about if we were going to do some photography on some of these uh right shawls as you call them yes um, <laughs> on, on how you wear them Right, you know exactly. Because there are very them. different ways that you can wear them, I think. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. It's funny that we're doing this whole conversation while we're heading into the summer. Yeah. But it's actually a cooler day in Ontario today. I think it's yeah, supposed to be a high of is. eight. So for yeah, us, that's a little cooler. You know, last week we were out kayaking and it was like 30 degrees. But, right. Uh, yeah, so. All right, and what I'm wearing is the Hipster Light, and that's by Hohi Locatelli kind of just gives it's you a really idea. nice one I like that one. I do I and the it's color and, and it's kind of open work now I have to admit <laughs> sweating buckets I am but that's okay because we're we just want to show you how it goes I had debated long sleeve short sleeve shirt yeah no so anyway it's all right it's comfy and it's lovely it feels good so um this yarn is the townhouse yarns Clarendon sock and this is yarn that we got when we were in Ireland oh Nice. Yes. That's why it's so lovely. That is it's why. It's Irish. Exactly. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, and next, we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is a sweater. And it is the Lizzie sweater. I'll just show you out of the book. And that's from the Coco Knits Workshop book. Um, I made it out of Malabrigo sock yarn, which is lovely. Um, this one needed to be blocked, not to make it any bigger, but just 
to smooth everything out and that's what I'm liking about blocking it just makes everything lay nicely now this is one of those things that would be great for you to photograph either on me or on right. something else um, just to show you so I like these photo I'm just gonna mention I like these photographs they're all on uh, like a plain kind of white background with exactly. a little bit of shadow but they're all very yeah. uh, similar in the same the same thing right and um, Julie Weisenberger is the person who does all the coconut things she is amazing if you get a chance to take her class i would it's usually a part one and part two you have to take but there's so much information about picking up stitches and all kinds of good things so now there's this has nothing to do with knitting but the feel of this cover i love it i know it's a beautiful <laughs> it's kind of like feels like rubber i know uh, doesn't it what is I that i know i don't I've know i've never felt that before well but it's very interesting because somebody asked her if she was going to write another book and she said nope her heart and soul went into this one it's got all the tips and tricks that you need, and then there are other patterns that she's come out with, but she said she doesn't need to write another book. Really? Yep. Now, do you like the, the way this has been written and the patterns or anything? I like? do like how it's been written. I like the patterns that are in there. I am very glad that I took the class, though. Okay. Because I think there were things that she mentioned and showed you that were very helpful. Good. Okay, well, so that's that deal. one. So here is the sweater. So it's a short sleeve. It's it's a crossover kind of sweater. I made it longer than in the pattern because I'm so tall, but it's just, I tend to wear things longer and not cropped. And like, I think we are correct in taking a photograph because yes. you can't see how this would hang and where it no, sits and that's right. what it looks like. Right. So I think exactly. uh, this might be the first thing that we'll photograph. I think, that's, I think a that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. yeah. It's really light. Um, and I really like, um, it's drapey, so I think it's going to be nice just to yeah. have over your shoulders. I love the feel of it. I think yeah. you can probably appreciate it more when it's on. Yes, I think Is so. Is that supposed to be? Oh, no. It just caught there a little bit, I think. Now it's okay. Okay, yeah. good. So there you go. <laughs> okay, perfect. Wow, it feels soft. Is it there does. cashmere in this one? There's no cashmere. Wow. Yeah. Very soft. I love I the yarn. I know. Um, so that's the first one. Now the second one, the yarn will feel very different. And that is the Terra Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And this yarn is the Erin Moore Light, and it's got fine merino, cashmere, and silk in it. And one would think it would be soft, but I haven't blocked it. So when you feel this, you're going to want to make a face. So you, you put it in soak, is that correct? You put it in soak or eucalan, and then what happens is, oh, we're upside down. Oh, my fault. Um, I don't know how you know, but... There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's something called a garter tab at the top. Okay. Perfect. So there it is. It's lovely. It's open. I love the color, um, but it does need to be softened up a little bit. So once I do that blocking, it will open it up a little bit, but I'm really, really like happy with it. like the pattern that. and everything in that. It's I do. Lovely. Yeah. I know that the wool is a little rustic A little bit. You. Not too bad. I know. But it's, I think, like you say, once you soak that up and soften exactly. it up, it'll be okay. Because yeah. very light. Yes, for, absolutely. It's a lot of yarn, but it's right. light. And that's by the Fiber Company. So it is a DK yarn, and it was nice to knit. It knits up really quickly, so I really, really like that one. All right. The next one is the... I'll let you... Oh, know. nice. That's the Kairos. So it is a knit cuff. Don't know. There you go. And that's by Lori Nelkin. Now that's how the kit comes. So it has the fastener, it has the yarn, it has the beads. It's got, I think, three different sizes that you can make it. And I'm kind you of made went, the small one for yourself. You know what? I I made the small one and a few extra rows. And it's pretty small, but you've got a very small wrist. But I that's do. That's nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's a little more summery. I've got one that's black with beads and it's got a black clasp yeah that's um, nice that'll little be bit nice more a little bit of a tan and well, gorgeous you get a little bit of tan oh <laughs> i get pink and then i'm white again <laughs> that's what i get so anyway so i'm really happy with it i'm glad to get it done because now i can start wearing it sometimes i did the knitting when my hand was sore and it was fine it just gave me something to do and sit and knit so i'm happy with that now the last finished object is the christine button cowl and that's by Cozy Up Knits. And this is where I had to call May. May, help! Um, the yarn that I used is Charisma by Loops and Threads. So it is a bulky acrylic yarn that now I got. Well, if I remember Michaels. correctly, this didn't take you long to do this. No. Am I correct in saying that? Correct. Okay. Because it's Because it seems yarn. like you just started it and all of a sudden you're like, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, didn't you just put that on your needles? It's got cables, but it's lovely. Now, this yeah. is something that May would love to wear in the winter. Yes, I love it. I can't but wait. 
But the well, neat thing about I can it, wait for winter. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> the nice thing about it, look at those buttons. And those buttons are from Miss May and oh. our talented wood. Well, there you go. Exactly. You know I love and this is a mutual it. project for It us. is a mutual pro yeah. project. Yes, I really, really like it. Good. So I just steam blocked it a little bit just to open the cables up, but it just pulls over the head. This will look nice. Won't, won't make you do, but you pull it over your head and it sits. Now, this is sewn together just so, and the the buttons just hold it firm. You know what I think we need? What? A horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can see somebody going on with a cowboy hat and a, and putting this on and riding a horse. <laughs> That you know, sometimes <laughs> I don't understand the train of thought. I just have to hop on when she starts. <laughs> Get on that train. Get on that train. Yep. Well, okay, well, there you go. Exactly. I really do appreciate you making yeah. those buttons because right yeah. now we can't get out and do the button thing. So those are my finished objects and May, finished objects for you. I do have one finished object, but I'm going to wait to the craft section to show you that. Okay, perfect. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is something called It Be, and that's by Laura Nelkin. So it is made out of some cotton fine yarn that's called Vando. It's called tape, um, tape yarn. So it's interesting to work with. I've seen it blocked. It's gonna make a big difference. So there is what it looks like. And it feels like thick thread almost. But as I said, I've seen this blocked. And this is one of the um, Lola's Choice. So Laura Nelkin does a kit every two months. You can pay for as many months in a row as you want. So I paid for six way back when. Um, I'm not sure whether this is the fifth or the sixth. I have to do some double checking. And this one had a very interesting con construction. But you can see I'm just about there because I've got the beads up at the end nice and light it's very light um, and it does block and open so it's really nice could you wash this like is it yeah it just feels like a thread it, feels it like does a but it is um a cotton tape yarn and it it looks a little uneven but that will all even out when you block it now i'm using um some looking needles because they suggested using wooden needles um because it slips so much and i know that i'm going to say this i shouldn't do it before i'm done they talked about putting uh lifelines in here i didn't mm. um i'm so close You're to being confident to <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't have said it out loud um but anyway i they showed pictures of lifelines and those kind of things but it's yeah, well it's written gonna be nice it's very yeah. different like it's yes, really it is. different this would be a nice summary thing because there's nothing to this like exactly it's, it's like wearing a whole bunch of thread exactly <laughs> but it's now, nice with exactly be nice for summer now yeah. the neat thing is there were three colors there was a blue kind of a tealy green and this lilac purple. purple and so may and i had a bet we didn't bet anything other than we bet um and i said okay may what color do you think and you said purple and i said oh it's not gonna be purple it'll be something else. i said and it's got to be purple for you may and was right and behold, so it was just random draw what you got you didn't get to order that pop piece of the puzzle but that was good so i'm very very happy with that we'll see how it goes and then blocking it will be beautiful i think i'll take some pictures of blocking this one because there's going to be some points that you That's have to block idea, out yeah. i think that will be good now my second work in progress are called baby booties without seams top down and this is by yarn thrower now have you done these before i know you've done no, booties before because the idea is they're seam free and i thought well we are just going to give this these a are, try this is a cute this is very exactly. cute exactly so i'm very happy with it now i started a hat out of this yarn so my hokey terra shawl had this much left and i started a hat and may's going colleen you cannot put a hat like that on a baby. I'm gonna block that other shawl and we're gonna, the terra see shawl, and we're gonna see if up. it softens up. Because if it does, it would be nice to have booties and, and a hat to match. And a hat to match. Yeah, that's so gonna be so this cute. This yarn thrower has a top down one and she always, she also has a bottom up, which I'm gonna try. Right. But that's and the how first we, was one. Was it an easy knit? Like a. It was. It's got little twists and turns and at the end of it, you're just binding and these up. little holes here are to put this little uh right so you can put a ribbon through or i might crochet something through that's made of the same yarn and that's then it nice. just tightens it on yeah that is nice because then the baby doesn't fall off because you know what that was like i do <laughs> to and find they like to kick them off they kicked <laughs> off shoes they cook up socks that's right yeah those are great that's exactly. less lovely yeah so that's kind of cute 
Then my next one is the Katie Shawl, and that's by Cozy Up Knits. Those are the lovely people from Cozy Up Knits. They have a great podcast. They're from Grand Prairie, Alberta. There's four sisters. Now, this shawl was something else. <laughs> so I had knit a shawl and I blocked it and I thought this is not going to work for me. I'm not, I'm not going to enjoy it. And we were going in the car and I thought I need something that is just a lot of plain knitting. And so because I had already ripped that other one out and I, I have to tell you if you knit something and you don't really enjoy it or you don't have somebody else you could give it to then my suggestion is don't just keep it and think oh yeah I'll wear it sometime because that other shawl I would never have worn mm -hmm. and I really love this pattern this is the second one that I'm making and you made me a cowl out of this pattern or? I did I, I kind of hacked it a little bit and it was good now this yarn is midnight cravings and it's called sweet sock it is soft. It's lovely. Are you happier with this one? Oh my goodness. I can't tell you how. I, I just, love this. And I only want it to be winter for a day, but I'd love to be winter. When <laughs> I get this done, it'll yeah, be great. Yeah, this is really nice. It turned out nice. Yeah. So there's two colors. This is the amethyst brooch, and I think this is called tapenade. I've only got this one attached right now, but I'm really, really happy with it. I'm going to be busy on that photo shoot. I know. It's great. And I'm, lucky, nice I'm really one. lucky that I've got somebody who can take great pictures for me. That is fantastic. All right. Now, my fourth work in progress is another pattern by Cozy Up Knits. Oh, it looks like my printer needs ink again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Northern Fringe Cowl. I have to tell you, here's a little secret. Here's the secret. <laughs> What's the <laughs> secret? I you think I'm in trouble. <laughs> yes? Colleen knows when I say that, she's in trouble. Yeah. When I, I barely, rarely print anything. Yes. So that printer goes all the time for patterns and whatever else. So right. You, you, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm listening carefully. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> and when I go to print, there's never any ink. Or, That's not true. Okay, well, there's maybe ink sometimes. Yes. But paper. There's never paper. <laughs> there's never paper. Like, I, right. I, I print maybe once. I hear the machine going all the time. <laughs> printing, printing, printing. <laughs> And I thought, oh, okay, well, so then, you know, maybe three weeks later I might go print something. Oh, there's no paper. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I should put paper in it every night before I go to bed. <laughs> that's too much stress. No, that's too, too much, much stress. pressure. That's it's okay. Right. I'm not really okay. complaining. I mean, if that's the worst thing in my life. Oh, okay. But, then you're but doing it's okay. just kind of one of those things that I think, well, now I'm just like, well, I'll just. <laughs> I know what I should do before I go print something. I should probably Check put paper, paper in it. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe if I print a pattern, I'll put paper in. So when okay. you say there's no ink, it makes me smile. Okay. Just so you know, that was printed months ago, but that's another story. <laughs> All right. So here is the Northern Fringe cowl. Now it doesn't look like anything right now, but this I have to do some sewing on, sewing up, so it makes kind of the kind of cowl that May's wearing, and then I'm going to put some fringe on. That's nice. Just a very plain. Exactly. Kind of a looking thing, eh? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be nice. Nice and warm. Mm hmm So that is also the Charisma, whoops, the Charisma by Loops and Threads. Nice. So I have a lot of that because I was making scarves and cowls and all kinds of things. And then Michael's around Christmas time usually has a good sale. Um, and so I'd go, well, I'll just get a whole bunch. And so now I have a whole bunch, which is good because when you can't go out to Michael's right now. And we're still on lockdown here in Ontario, just to yeah. give you a quick update. Exactly. And um, we're not really opening up for another two weeks, uh, apparently, until 60% right. until of the people in Ontario are vaccinated, which I think is a good thing. With at least one shot. With at least one shot, which right. is a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really looking forward to the two-week still on lockdown. Right. Because um, when we say lockdown, we're on lockdown. The stores have aisles blocked off. Right. Um, it's only golfers that just are able to golf right now. Yeah. Restaurants aren't open all on Ontario. No, just take um, out. You can only go out for essentials. That's right. it. Um, but I kind of like their approach to 60% of how they've done it. 60% mm -hmm. of the people vaccinated because yep. then it's like peer pressure. You know how you used to do that in school? <laughs> You know, so yep. then people are saying, look, get your vaccine, because when we get 6%, we can open up. Right. I know other countries do incentives, like for beer and that. I don't right. know if they know how that's going to work out, right. um, this incentive thing. But I like the peer pressure idea that 
you know what? You better get your vaccine. Like I'll say to my neighbors, get your vaccine. We need to get 6% of the <laughs> population. We want to get out of here. <laughs> but uh, it's, it hasn't been an easy road for uh, this, this lockdown. It's been pretty, right. pretty strict. So, exactly. but you know, not too many people complaining because we do appreciate those uh, healthcare workers exactly. and the grocery workers, the frontline people, not just the healthcare workers, yeah, absolutely. but absolutely everybody. Because I think of the grocery workers when this first happened, we were going to get toilet paper and we were going to get <laughs> um, food. And those people, they had no idea how to social, they didn't talk about social, they had to learn from the ground up. Right. Social distancing, masking, wiping the carts, plastic, uh, big plastic, plastic around. They had to come up with all of that yeah. as we were, we were, we were sitting at home being all, well, what's going That's on? Right. They were out there doing that. Exactly. So I really appreciate that. And I think that we can respect that by getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think that's a sign of being respect for, uh, all the frontline workers that have, have gone out do. there and have done that for that's us. Absolutely so right. The least we can do. That's for sure. Anyway, that's my little spiel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I have one more work in progress, and that is the Anchors, or Anchors, I'm not sure, Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. Now, I've made this before. Love it. I love it as well, but I wanted to have one that was in black. Now, this is a different yarn. And this is the Remix Light by Barocco. And it's nice and soft, and which is amazing to me. So this has nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, linen. It's beautiful, and it's 100% recycled fibers. Nice. So it's impressive. Now it looks, not, it looks kind of like a cowl right now, um, but it, right now I'm starting the raglan increases, and I'm really, really happy with it, and I think it's going to work well. Nice. I'm trying a different size than I made last time and we will see. Smaller I think? Yes. Because I'm, this does have stretch in it. I right. I think that was what you exactly. were expecting. Right? So I, uh, the one that I had, I have tried on and I thought I'd, if it was a little bit smaller than that, but as I said, if it's not fitting, I'm just going, the nice thing about top down, you can try on and if it's not fitting, then I'll rip it out and then I'll have to do it again. But that's okay. I don't mind doing that because I'd rather have something Fits, that I know for sure you're I can wear. wear. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. So those are my works in progress. And next we're going to talk about our craft adventure. Welcome to Craft Adventures. I've been pretty busy with my uh, scroll sawing. And Colleen, what have you been up to? Well, I wanted to start that sweater that I just showed. And what I wanted to show you is... I knew I wanted to work out a size, so I actually did something I do, haven't done before. Normally, when I make a swatch, right, a gauge swatch, what I do is I just go back and forth. I'm not supposed to. If it's knit in the round, you're supposed to knit in the round, but you don't want to knit in the round in a big way. So I'm just going to show you what I did. So I use circular needles. I knit across and then I push the stitches back and you can see that I've carried this yarn all the way up the back. Now you have to be careful that you give yourself lots of room and then you just are always knitting every single row. And I've seen people do this and I thought, oh, I don't really need to worry about it. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to change size, I want to make sure that I'm worrying about it. So that's what I did. Now, I, to be honest with you, I haven't washed it because I'm not really worried about the washing and blocking piece of it. I'm not going to try and stretch it. I'm not going to worry about that. This has got a lot of give to it. But it's just, it was an interesting process. My suggestion, it wasn't a hard process. So if you think you're going to be knitting something in the round and you want to make sure that you've got your tension right, I would definitely do this. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It, was, it was good. I'm happy with it. And so that's what I've been doing. And May? Well, uh, last week I did my um, healthcare worker. Uh, it just symbolizes them being angels. And, and like I said, the grocery workers and that too. I didn't right. know how to do a grocery worker or right. show them. But <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's beautiful. Just to symbolize the frontline workers. It's so really, then I really thought, beautiful. I really like this. But I, th I thought, I really want it to be sitting. And I wanted to maybe facing. So I came right. up with another um, plan of my own. Okay. Um, I did. Uh, and you I really and I worked like this on one. this one. Yeah. That's right. And so that's what it came up with. It is beautiful. So, I love how you've painted it because it makes a yeah. difference and the wings being the color they are, it's great. And um, I did this with the Intarsia and mm -hmm. I still I haven't really, this could maybe be not a finished object yet because uh, work in progress because I have to put the back on this yet 
Generally, I put the back on and then I paste all the little, glue all the little pieces in. Right. But this time I glued all the pieces together and then I'm going to make the backdrop. Now, is there a reason that you did it that way? Um, there is because I found that when I did cut out the backdrop, I was not sure if I was going to get all the pieces um, to where they should sit. Okay. This way I can kind of judge as to where it's going to be. Right. So. And how did you make sure you had the right piece in the right part? Because it's like a puzzle that you don't know what well, it, it works with. Well, you know, that's really uh, interesting that you say that because um, if you pull it apart, it's really hard and to get it together. <laughs> so what I do is I put numbers on every piece, on the back of every piece. Let me see the back of every piece. There's some numbers back there. Wow. And I number each piece. And so then it's easy when I... When it's not together, you can't tell right. where it goes. Okay, so now did you have a picture that you had the numbers on? No, I, yes, what I did okay. is I made my pattern. Right. And then I put the picture uh, on the pattern. Okay. And then I just numbered the pattern with, with what's okay, coincided with it. the numbers here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That makes total so, sense. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of happy how those it's turned great. out. It's uh, great. They are a little bit of time taking Piece, but I think they kind of symbolize what good work those people do. So You're a talented we do soul, appreciate that. Sure. Right. So that is my craft adventures. That's what I've been up to. And we like to get out more. Like we don't do as many uh, crafting adventures in this warm weather when it was been right, warm. We've right. been exactly. trying to do more adventures of getting out. So maybe right. we can videotape some of our outings. Um, That's that might good. be. You know, it's hard to come up with some ideas. When we're not traveling and, and going to all these yarn stores, but we're doing we're doing okay. We're exactly, we've done really really well. Yeah. You were you came up with the idea of doing crafting adventures, which is great. And as you say, now that the weather's better, we can now maybe we can go get, out on our bikes and show you know loading up the bikes and going on right. the bike paths. We could That's go a great idea. We could go to the uh, the lakes and show you maybe where we walk down the lake and, and do right. the things that we do outside and right do that. That's not too thing. close to people. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the good thing about being outside in the summer because you don't have to be where other people are. And right, do that. right. So anyway, that is Minecraft Adventures. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. My souvenir is the Sweater Care Kit by Coco Knits. So it's got all kinds of goodies in it. If you want to block a sweater, if you want to wash a sweater, this has got some items for you. Now you've been blocking the sweater for for a while. You've been right. blocking sweaters. I've never needed this kit. So right. what is in this kit that you need that you didn't have before? Do you know? Yes, I do. That's it's good. got all That's kinds good. of <laughs> it's got all kinds of neat little things that makes life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do when you're doing a sweat layer or washing a sweater so it's either a washing or it is a blocking either way is that you need to have a towel or something to wring it out in so you put it in the water you let it soak and then you take that out and um kind of press roll the water out and you're going to i've it seen you do towel. that before with an old so you have a this towel. has what's called a drying towel and there's the size of it so it's a nice big size i'll let you hold that i'm sorry it's very crinkly it's a nice big size. And this, this feels like the same material. You know those sponges you see on TV that soak everything up? Exactly. You know when you, they spill coke on the carpet, then they like throw this the sham orange wow. sham, chamois on there? <laughs> yep, that's it. And the next it. thing you know, the coke is gone. This that's feels exactly like the same material. Very that, similar. Yeah. That's right. So it's bigger, um, and so it's going to be able to take up more of the water out yeah. of the And it says right on the back here as I'm holding this up, super absorbent. There you so go. So that will help you more than the towel when you're Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so well, that's, that's a, good. Makes sense? Yeah. So that's the totally first makes thing. sense. Now, the You want to make your life easier. Thing. Exactly. Now, the next thing is something called a super absorbent blocking cloth. So it has measurements all done out. So if you need to have something be, you know, 24 inches across, then it's got that on it, and you can pin it and put it the way that it needs to I be. I see. So you use your drying towel. Yep. And then you put this down. Now, would you put this down? I know when you've blocked before, you've put those mats down. Correct. So then you would put this on top of those mats. Correct. And exactly. Show you the mat. And that saves you from getting the yardstick and the measuring tape. And all that kind of stuff. Great idea. All right. So, so that, far, so good. I'm on board with this oh, so good. far. Oh, good. We like that she's on board. <laughs> now. <laughs> like it matters. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all kinds of neat gadgets. Okay. This next thing, which I'm not going to open because... It does crazy things. It's called a pop-up dryer. 
So what it does, as you can see from the picture, I think, and maybe you'll see from the picture. Okay, the pop-up dryer allows air to circulate around your sweater and speed drying time without having to flip your sweater. Right. Once your garment has dried until damp on the blocking cloth, mm -hmm. gently slide the flattened dryer between the garment and the cloth. Reach underneath the dryer and bring the straps together underneath and snap them together. Dry will pop up in the middle and allow air circulation. Oh, I see the picture there. I that. know. Can you see that picture there? It kind of looks like it would be like this, so exactly. it gets underneath the air. Exactly. So you let it dry for a little bit, and then you can do that, and it will dry faster. Well, that makes total sense, too. Yes. This this is going to help you out a lot. Exactly. This it's is silly. And to be honest with you, this is part of the reason why I started that sweater, because I thought, i got to try all my new gadgets. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. You like getting new gadgets. Now and the thing is, I think we should have a review of this I will because I think it's nice to see all this stuff, but then to actually see it in action right. would be awesome. So maybe exactly. I could film you Perfect. using this stuff yeah. because, you know, this sounds like a really great idea, but maybe when you get it out, you don't think so. Right. So it'd be great to have a review. All right. So now there's two sweater bags. There's a large sweater bag and a small sweater bag, and it says use this bag to wet block or wash an adult sweater. Fold the sweater, zip it in the bag, and put the entire bag in a front load washing machine on hand wash cycle. We don't have a front load. That's not happening. Only do this. We used to have a front load. We did, and it what a disaster. <laughs> I don't know what happened with that thing. Well, we only had it for um, I think the warranty, like the 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 day before the warranty, it, something. something happened, and then they fixed and then, it. then then they had it. This is very funny. It's not a big space, but they had the whole machine out in the hallway like piece little tiny pieces remember that yes, you couldn't too. even go to the washroom because the hallway was full of pieces now what i would have done is just gave us a new machine but right. they didn't want to do that they no. sent this guy he spent like a whole day piecing this thing back together right and it was really never right after that we used it for for a while mm -hmm. after yeah, that exactly and then uh, we thought you know what we're going old school we're not going to have a front <laughs> washer right. anymore exactly. we've, we've had it up to here exactly. but exactly maybe it was just we didn't give it an, uh, another one another right day. and yeah that's the story about the washing yes story about if that. you have other sweaters in your life besides things that you've hand knit and you just want them not to get caught so let's say you have a sweater and you're washing it with something I'm going to say like a bra that has a hook on it, then you can put it in here and it's going to protect it. That's yeah, the idea. That's so a there's a large idea. one and we've, there's a We've small. had these types of things, not yep. specifically like this, but right. we've had those for different things. Exactly. Are, but, you know. So these, this is a really fine mesh. So I'm yeah. really, really happy with that. So that, and it all comes in this lovely bag. So hopefully I'll be able to put it, it back with in the bag. It's even got little side pouches in the bag. Oh, and the place, I ordered this from Art of Yarn in British Columbia. I was trying to get it from somewhere in the States. It wasn't happening. There was a place in near us in Hamilton. They were out of stock. So it took me a while to figure out where, and then all of a sudden I had this brilliant idea and there it was. So did it take a long time to come? No, it didn't take too long to come at all. It came and it came in a wine box, which is even better. <laughs> There's no wine, but it came in a wine box. But they did send me some, um, a sample of Euclid, and they gave me the um, unscented, I think is what they sent. Nice. Which was very nice of them. So everything can fit in here once it's all dried. And I'm happy that that will keep things That's organized. That's a brilliant souvenir, I have to say. That is wonderful. I am so happy with it because yeah. when I took the class, from Julie Weisenberger, who's the burger, who's the person from Coco Knits. She was talking about this and she talked about that pop thing and I think, oh, that would make life so much easier. Well, so we'll I'm find very excited. Out. We will find out. Exactly. Sure. So May, souvenirs for you? Well, um, I was thinking about my mom during souvenirs and right. she, her um, carbon monoxide detector went on the fritz. And oh, I went to, you know how we only have pickup right now? You can't really go into stores and right, that, uh, right. Canadian Tire and, and those types of places. Right. Um, so we just went on Amazon and I was able to pick her up a uh, first alert. Very good. I don't know if you have one of these in the house, but you know, um, I think it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. And, and then I feel better that she's got this and right. she doesn't have to worry. This one, uh, you can plug it into the wall and right. also it has battery backup. So. Oh, perfect. So we're going to get it to her soon? Yes, I will take that over to her tomorrow. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So, so that's what I got in the mail. and. That's it, Colin. Not, not quite as exciting as mine. No, it but, isn't. But, <laughs> but it's, it's smart, and, yeah. and that's what we need to do. Those are our souvenirs. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe. Let us know what you're doing to keep busy during 
lockdown during the pandemic, how you're coping with things going on. Um, there's lots of stuff that you would like to do that you're not able to do. And if you've got any ideas for us, that would be fantastic. And we could pass them along. Exactly. Perfect. And so until next time, you take care.